Massachusetts School District posting signs reading this. Attention, please be aware that the staff at Medina ISD... At least 19 people have been killed Wednesday, after flash floods and landslides tore through the western region of Java Island in Indonesia. Nineteen forty-six, um, you know, uh, second uh, United Nations organization, which was formed, and then nations of the world began to meet together, and began to, um, you know, United Nations began to preside over international matters to settle disputes between nations in order to avoid a repeat of uh, the event of the Second World War, which had cost the world fifty-five million lives, and that was the time at which the atom bomb was at its preliminary, most preliminary stage. In 1946, Joseph Stalin, who was then president of the Soviet Union, having witnessed America's performance with the atom bomb, commissioned a crash program on atom bomb technology. And uh, something happened in 1950, okay, between 1946, uh, 47, 48. By 1948, America had started getting some European nations around it to form what was eventually known as the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. Well, as the name implies, North Atlantic Treaty Organization was a pact. Uh, it was formed by, uh, it was actually formed by a pact called the Treaty of Washington, signed in 1949, and uh, it was aimed at protecting all the nations on the northern side of the Atlantic. And all these nations, uh, nations such as America and Canada, and then some, some uh, European nations, which include Britain, France, um, you, know, um, you know, Germany, much later Norway, uh, Brussels, Netherlands, Denmark, uh, and so on. Now, um, now let me explain a very vital point. At the end of the Second World War, now we are looking at global implications of resource crisis, and then an alignment of nations towards the coming global war, because you see. Where the world stands to get today is very similar to where the world stood in 1945, at the point where the world was grossly in such a direction. Which way do we go? And from available historical evidence, all the major armed conflicts in the world have been largely economic, more economic than they, than they were political. Political issues hardly have led to war. Uh, it, it's basically the resource struggle, you know, the, the struggle for global resource control that very often gives rise to a crisis of global dimensions. As I'm speaking with you, um, there is a global resource crisis over the uh, sale of crude oil in the world. Crude oil, for instance, was discovered, uh, first discovered in the Persian Gulf uh, in 1931 by America. In fact, it was first discovered in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia in 1931. And Americans flooded Saudi Arabia, explored the oil. And if you notice, between 1931 and 1968, 
uh, uh, Americans had massive investment in, in Saudi Arabia and Saudi Arabians also had massive investment in America. Now that gives us the background for understanding the war against terror and in fact for understanding the circumstances that created terror in the first instance and then the ongoing war against terror but when you examine the issues very critically you will find that the nations that have suffered most critically uh, at, at the hands of terror in the world are nations which have worked so hard to create the terrains of terror in the world and that's the crisis we face so let's take a little look at europe 1945 and then we'll, we'll take a look at um, how the world stands, you know, uh, you know, uh, presently, uh, you know. I, I was saying that, that the whole world is caught up uh, in severe uh, economic crisis uh, and, there, and there are obvious indicators of this economic, economic crisis. In, in Nigeria, for instance, um, uh, you know, um, crude oil, uh, because, because crude oil accounts for 85% of Nigeria's gross domestic earning, yeah, you know, GDP, a gross domestic product. Uh, you know, uh, uh, whatever happens to crude oil in the world affects Nigeria terribly. In 2014, crude oil price reached an all-time mark of $140 per barrel. And Nigeria also reached uh, uh, an all-time high a period of, uh, of gross earning. One of, the, one of the questions we want to ask is, what did Nigeria do between 2014, June 2014, when oil reached an all-time mark, all-time price of, of $140 per barrel, and then from, from June uh, uh, 2014, and then December 2014, and then January 2015, global oil glots. And uh, if Nigeria had done more effective economic planning, perhaps it would have been able to have a stabilized economic situation um, such that, um, you know, the collapse of oil price, uh, you know, would not have terribly affected the country as it is doing presently. If you look at the, uh, if you look at the 2016 budget in Nigeria, for instance, you will find out that the 2016 budget in Nigeria was predicated at an oil price, crude oil price of $38 per barrel. Uh, and that was because by January 2016, crude oil price had dropped to $50 per barrel, vacillated between, uh, between $50 per barrel and $55 per barrel. And uh, it was wise of the government to have predicated oil price at $38 per barrel. And the government also predicated oil production volume uh, as at January 2016, oil production volume was predicated at 2.2 um, million barrels per day, you know. Uh, and then, um, but you know, and uh, and yet, by, as of January 2016, the Nigerian budget uh, uh, was was terrible because it was predicated upon uh, okay a total expected income of uh, 6.08 trillion naira. Now, out of this 6.08 trillion naira, the government was was going to expect three a whooping sum of three trillion naira from borrowing internal and external borrowing that's that's amazing government was was expecting to earn in the year 2016 a total income of uh, 3.08 trillion naira but by by april april may june uh, 2016 the budget had totally collapsed because uh you know Oil production volume had dropped from the uh, predicated position of 2.2 million barrels per day to uh, 1.5 million barrels per day, and then oil price has dropped much further, you know, to an all-time low mark. And because the the country does not have stabilizing factors in terms of alternative re revenue sources, this country is actually in some serious crisis. 
um, uh, we hear in the last couple of days, well, shortly after the World Bank IMF meeting in Washington, Nigerian government has been able to broker a sum of 1.3 billion US dollars. Uh, I, I mean, IMF uh, funding or World Bank funding for Nigerian Development Bank. Now that's that's beautiful. Although it remains a loan at some interest rate, uh, you know, it's supposed to be some uh, uh, ameliorating uh, intervention from the the world financial institution. But that does not amount to a solution to the crisis in itself. Now, so we're looking at the world as it is in relation to global challenges. You know, I was saying that at the end of the Second World War in 1945, Germany remained intact. And, and you know, Germany, France, Britain, Brussels, Italy, Denmark, Netherlands, uh, Norway uh, are actually, uh, you know, European nations. But as that, in fact, between 1945 and up till 1957, European nations were still very skeptical of Germany because of the crisis Germany suffered at the hands of Adolf Hitler and Germany. So by 1949, when the North Atlantic Treaty Organization was formed, Germany was completely out of it. And then, um, you know, then gradually, nations of Europe began to get together to gradually begin to reconstruct their internal operations. We have shown that it was the crisis in Europe and then the struggle for resource control that has led the world into the crisis that it, that it has today. And from the section we read in Daniel chapter 2, you are going to see that Europe is a place to watch. Uh, well, not just Europe now, but a realignment of forces. What is happening now is beyond the traditional power blocks in the world as we knew them. What we are going to begin to witness is a gradual realignment of nations on the basis of resource control, resource affinity, economic affinity, uh, and then pursuit of uh, related economic objectives. But because God is amazing, it is this pursuit of related economic objectives that will gradually align the nations of the world in such a pattern that will bring the world into the Third World War, as the Bible has said it would happen. I made a slight reference to what's happening in Syria, and I will not discuss that in detail until I have effectively brought Israel into the picture. And uh, if you read Zechariah chapters 12, 13, and 14, and I'm going to be reading those texts in the course of these elucidations, you will find out that gradually, as the scripture says, nations of the world are going to gather in Jerusalem for war. For the first time in world history, America is presenting a picture that makes it a major, um, you know, political enemy of Israel, you know. I mean, amazing, but true all the same. Uh, ever since September 2015, when Vladimir Putin, the president of Russia, began massive bombing in Syria in order to dislodge the ISIS settlements in Syria. Uh, Vladimir Putin has been able to uncover uh, some sinister operations of America in Syria, uh, giving rise to uh, the, uh, the uncovering of, um, you know, uh, you know, American, heavy American funding of the ISIS operations and not just that, you know, um, you know, uh, ISIS training centers in remote areas in America, which is rather frightening. Uh, so for the first time in world history, um, America, which used to be a major ally of Israel, 
uh, is gradually turning its back against Israel. Now, in 1949, uh, at the time of the signing of the Treaty of Washington that gave rise to the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, the President Truman in America actually used, um, you know, aids, you know, uh, aids to lure some um, European nations on its side to form the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. Today, unfortunately, America, uh, because of a chronic economic crisis that uh, came to pub public limelight since 2007, America is no longer able to maintain AIDS uh, as it used to. Uh, and that's the major crisis that the world is facing. From, from 1949, America began to establish massive presence in different parts of the world. For instance, in 1949, um, at the time of uh, the uh, you know, communist revolution in, in Czechoslovakia, uh, America positioned Britain. Uh, and uh, stabilized Britain, uh, you know, uh, as a major political force and a, a military force uh, to resist communist incursion in Czechoslovakia, uh, you know, and uh, gradually America was able to um, bring together European nations in what was known as uh, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. I was, I was, I will bring Soviet Union a little into the picture because what you see of Russia today uh, is, is, um, is basically uh, what has been built up from 1946 when Joseph Stalin of Soviet Union first commissioned the, uh, atom uh, the crash program in atomic, uh, atom atomic bomb technology. In fact, in 1951, uh, during the crisis in Czechoslovakia, uh, the world was, was surprised that Soviet Union um, came into um, Czechoslovakia and began to use at atomic bomb. Now, just, just as Stalin had commissioned the crack program in, in atom bomb technology in 1946, by 1951, uh, Soviet Union had, had shocked the world by its massive exploits in atomic bomb technology. 1952, America, um, Soviet Union perfected its atomic bomb technology. 1952, America had commissioned its strategic defense initiative program. Now, I can say this until I get to the point where I discuss it in, in detail, that one of the remote causes of what we experience today as economic crisis, economic recession in the world, one of the remote causes is the massive investment in arms race from the period of 1945 to the period of 1990 when Soviet Union collapsed. Now let me explain a point here. Now when we say Soviet Union collapsed, many people think that Soviet Union collapsed militarily and economically and politically. What happened is far from that. What happened in fact was that Soviet Union dismembered but the member nations that came out from the Soviet enclave we are still very powerful nations and they are still very powerful nations. You know, in the last, in the last two weeks, America has threatened to stop Vladimir Putin's bombing in, in uh, Syria and uh, to react to Vladimir Putin's bombing in Syria. And uh, that's, that's in the last two weeks and uh, leaders of the world are already beginning to see in this a possibility of an alignment of nations on those two sides. Uh, and China has in fact the, 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 you know, made public uh, its intention to uh, take sides with, uh, with, with Russia uh, you know, uh, in the crisis in Syria. So it would appear that, uh, that Syria is presenting a platform for nations to get together uh, in what would be a, a, a global armed crisis that will probably bring this sphere of existence to a close. I was saying something about Soviet Union and, and the impression that Soviet Union collapsed. You know. Actually, what, what tended to happen was that communism, which was, basically, uh, which was basically an economic philosophy, collapsed in Soviet Union. But as at, the, as at 1990, when Soviet Union began to dismember, 
Soviet Union actually had 27,000 nuclear warheads. Out of these 27,000 nuclear warheads, 4,000 were stationed in Russia, 4,000 in Belarusia, 4,000 in Ukraine, and about 1,800 in uh, Kazakhstan, which is a small Muslim community in the northern part of Soviet Union. It was Kazakhstan that first declared independence from the Soviet enclave. And then shortly after that, Ukraine and Russia and Belarusia also declared independence, but they didn't stop there. They immediately formed a commonwealth of independent nations in order to protect themselves against any external aggression. So Soviet Union did not collapse, actually. The member nations are still very strong. Now, I want to begin to round off on this note, round off this segment on this note. Listen, the point we are making is that uh, the world stands right now at the point it stood about 1945, when the world was in such a direction, at a time when there was a global jostling for resource control. And this kind of global jostling for resource control usually has two effects. Number one, it produces the emergence of a global despot, a global tyrannical leader that will gradually, you know, um, you know, seize the emergence by force, seize the allegiance by force of all the nations of the world and bring everyone to submission. Let me round off this segment by making a reference to what Dr. Henry Spark said, the Secretary General of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization in the 1980s. He said, what we need is a man of sufficient stature to hold our allegiance together and to bring us out of the economic morass in which we've been steeped. And he said, give us such a man, whether he be God or the devil, we shall receive him. Second Thessalonians chapter 2 tells us in detail about the setting of the world that will pave way for the emergence of the Antichrist, that will seize government upon the earth and bring all nations together unto a timely submission unto a tyranny of a government that is other than God's government. When the Antichrist takes over the world, before that time, the saints of God would have been raptured to heaven. I want to ask you a question. If you die and go to hell, will you say that nobody warned you about the, the eternal significance of what's happening right now, about the, the well-being of your soul? Listen to me. We are what, what we are seeing in the world is indicating that the, this this fear of existence is coming to a close because the jostling of nations will eventually lead to war, and this fear of existence will come to a close. Where will you spend eternity, my friend? Close your eyes for a word of prayer. Precious Father, we give you praise. Awesome God, we glorify you. Mighty King, you are our rock and our strength and our dwelling place. Thank you for your word that has gone forth. Your word says that when your word has gone forth, it will not come back void, except it first fulfills the purpose for which you sent it forth. Oh God, my Father, I decree that nobody who has had your word this day will, will perish, oh God. This word that we've had this day, oh God, will not rise in judgment against us on that day of reckoning. Instead, oh God, this word will be a pointer unto us, on, onto that path of life. May your name be glorified. Thou who alone are worthy to be called God. Blessed be your holy name, awesome Jehovah. In Jesus' mighty name we've prayed. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us in this episode of the program. Our objective is to inform you regarding the things that are happening right around you so you, you won't get confused. You might be tempted to think that God is confused, that God has abandoned the, the landscape, the horizon. No, he hasn't. Everything is happening as his word said it would happen. And we trust you're going to keep a date with us. We have many books on end time issues, but this is the one you need to have. Imagine World Ruler and the Great War. In this book, we have shared issues on the end time as it affects the global alignment of nations, global economic crisis, economic meltdown, and issues that border on contemporary developments all over the world. God bless you, my friend, for being part of this program. Thank you so much. <music>